What is going on out there, world? It's your boy Tommy on the spot for Watch Along Wrestling. Hopefully everyone is doing well and being so. Uh, being doing, uh, I'm going to just redo it. Right. <laughs> what is going on out there, world? It's your boy Tommy on the spot for Watch Along Wrestling. Hopefully everyone is doing well and staying safe. Welcome to the second episode of Total Stevas. And it wouldn't be Total Stevas without my main man, Steve, down in Orlando, Florida. Steve, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm doing well. I'm staying safe. Uh, and I am so excited to go back to school tomorrow. Oh, man, I know. It's tough for you, uh, you guys down in Florida. I mean, it's cool because you guys have that cool, nice, hot summer weather for at least a few more months. But tough that your summer break ends so much later, that, so much earlier than it does for us here in, uh, in New York. You know, it's always a trade-off. We go back to school early, but we also get out early. So that is know. You know, we get extra stuff like we get a week, a whole week off for Thanksgiving. Well, I know oh. a lot of places only get maybe Thursday, Friday, maybe get like a little early day on Wednesday, but we get the whole week. So that is that's awesome. That is uh, that's great. Uh, well, here we are. We're getting ready for uh, episode number two of Total Divas. This episode is going to be around Fandango. Uh, and Steve, I'll tell you a little bit about Fandango as we get started with the show. But Steve, what have you thought about Total Divas so far, one episode in? Well, with the one episode that we saw, um, you know, it was definitely the the first episode to any TV show is always a little bit uh, maybe slower paced as you're getting to know the people, you know, whether it's a scripted show and you need to like get introduced to the characters or this kind of thing where you need to get the vibe of the whole thing. Um, so uh, knowing that I really only know of like a couple of the people that have appeared so far and I know absolutely nothing about Fandango. So I'm, I'm excited to, to get started here as well. All right. It sounds good. Are you ready to go? Are you uh, all set on the, on the Peacock network? Yep. Uh, like three triple zeros, actually five zeros for me. I'm all zeroed out. Yep. Yep. All right. So do you want to count us down and get started? All right. So I'm getting, we're going to go three, two, one, go. And on the go is the, the click, right. To get started. Sounds good. Okay. So three, two, one, go. And here we go with a little recap here of Total Divas. And so I guess I'll give you a little bit of a backstory about Fandango. Yeah. This episode's going to be uh, all about him. Uh, really, in 2013, Fandango debuted for WWE, came up to the main roster as this new character. He was initially Johnny Curtis. And had kind of bounced around WWE for a few years, in and out of developmental. Uh, he had came up to the main roster as Johnny Curtis. Then he was a part of one of the early editions of NXT before it became the NXT you know, where it was kind of like more of like a game show to see who would get a contract with WWE. And then was being uh, given this ballroom dancer gimmick that Vince McMahon absolutely loved. And of course he, he did about this was basically Chris Jericho had returned to WWE in uh, for WrestleMania 29 with the idea of wrestling Ryback. Uh, Ryback was a new character uh, who had been brought up and was kind of getting a, a big push for WWE in the main event scene. And Jericho thought it'd be great if he put Rhino, uh, Ryback over at WrestleMania, but it did not happen. Instead, Vince McMahon uh, booked him to wrestle the debuting Fandango. And here that he is. That would right here. Right on, right on command. There he is. And Fandango wrestled against Jericho. And uh, says he's one of the biggest superstars. And the reason for this was because, and she's not wrong, even though Fandango debuting was really weird and him wrestling Jericho at WrestleMania was even more weird. Uh, he not only did he wrestle Jericho, he defeated Chris Jericho pretty clean at WrestleMania. Uh, got a big win on his debut. Uh, so it was very bizarre. I think people were like, how do you use Chris Jericho at WrestleMania to just put over a brand new guy like Fandango? But they did. <laughs> and then the next night on Raw, uh, Fandango got unbelievably over with the uh, New Jersey crowd because of his music. And you heard that ballroom music there. Uh, yeah. And so the idea behind that was Fandangoing was born. Basically, his music would play and the crowd would, uh, eh, eh. Uh, 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 nah, 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 nah. and that's the whole night and they didn't stop doing it and this blew up his music was like number 15 on the charts in the uk wow. and did he became very popular but they decided to give him a valet a permanent valet and so here we are now on this episode of total divas you saw 
uh, Eva Marie and JoJo waiting on the side there watching uh, Raw, which they, they've typically done with some of the NXT talent too, brought them up to like a WrestleMania or something and had them kind of watch the show f- from the crowd uh, before coming up to the main roster. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I mean, it's definitely giving Dancing with the Stars. Um, it, it... That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. It's probably where it came from was Dancing yeah. with the Stars. Yeah, like it has to be. Because that, well, that show's been around a while, right? I guess, yeah, really long time. Yeah. Is it even still on the air? Um, almost positive it is. Might be on like one of the streaming platforms now. Yeah. As a- Although I think one of the, the uh, one of the original uh, judges just passed away, if I'm not mistaken. Who passed away? I want to say the old judge from Dancing with the Stars passed away. Oh, that's terrible. But, you know, that, that kind of going off on a little tangent here. Yeah. As we're as we're recording this, uh, Pee Wee Herman, I think, also passed away. But yes, yeah, I just saw that as well. He was, yeah, oh, that's that's it's very sad. And here are uh, Bree and Nikki. They're getting some coffee here and talking about. Uh, they're gonna do a little life swap so they could get to experience one of the one of each other's lives. Uh, well, each other's life lives rather. And I think uh, this is this is your your typical. Reality TV looking for a fun episode here. They're going to have Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella, who live in Aberdeen, Washington. Uh, you know, he's made it clear his father was like a, a woodsmith or a wood carver or something like that. Yeah. As, as basic as can be. And they're going to go live in the mansion that John Cena lives in. And I guess Nikki and John are going to go live and uh, experience more uh, normal life. Uh, that, Or I guess uh, more of the workers class life that Brie yeah. and Bryan like to live. The simple life, so to speak. So, so they're not doing so much as a wife swap. They're doing a life swap. They're doing the would have been would have been interesting to see if they did a life uh, a wife swap. Oh, <laughs> wife swap rather. And then, or girlfriend swap, I guess. Yeah, right. So they hadn't been married yet. Uh, Bree and Daniel Bryan not didn't get married yet either. Yeah. So there they are doing uh, in catering. There is Fandango, who you might remember from when we went to NXT, was actually one of those. Uh, He's in a tag team called Breezango, and they came out dancing and doing, like, uh, they came out as, like, firemen or policemen or something like that. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was toward the end of Fandango's run uh, when he was back in NXT. But uh, there they are in catering. I do like this because you can see the beautiful catering setup. Where so oh, many yeah, what a spread. Say, yeah, incredible spread. They always talk about there are folks that work for WWE who come to WWE, don't have anything to do on TV. And they hang out all night in catering. And on command, Zack Ryder walks into the street <laughs> to go and get some catering. Couldn't have planned that any better if I tried. Um, but so, yeah, so she's now going to try to convince WWE to be with Fandango. Uh, she's looking for kind of a, a fast track up to the main roster here. Kind of mm-hmm. skip the whole developmental deal and uh, try to get up there as soon as uh, she could to kind of work in with Fandango. Hey, it's the D.O. Double G. Oh, you didn't know who? I I, be, I didn't even recognize him <laughs> in, in a collared shirt and with you know without the the rat tail and, and everything. <laughs> it's definitely. Uh, I was like, Rose, who is this guy? <laughs> I was like, holy crap! Starting his rise into the backstage area for WWE as a producer, writer, um, and he's going to basically eventually become Triple H's right hand man. And when uh, hmm. things were going south and Triple H was taken out, uh, Road Dog was fired by WWE. But then when Triple H took things back over, he brought Road Dog right back, so. back. Yeah, and and now and HBK is of course that like the, the the lead executive on NXT and all that. And yep, yep. Always pays to be good friends with as many people as you can. You never know when they're going to be able in a position to help you. Uh, yeah, help, it, help you. It, it very much feels like Adam Sandler when he just puts his friends in all of his movies just to just to so that they can get that paycheck. Like right, I think Road Dogs made like six six appearances, uh, surprise appearances at the Royal Rumble to the point where it's like ah oh, okay they brought out Road Dog because you know he, <laughs> he was he was just sitting around backstage and it's like all right can you still fit in your gear just just head out there for a little bit. Exactly, come out do the uh, you know ladies and gentlemen deal and and that's it. Yeah. So they're kind of showing how uh, the, the Bella Twins are still feuding with the Funkadactyls. At this stage, they don't really have much of a Divas division yet. Uh, so they would have, like, your one five-minute TV match 
Uh, and on Total Divas, they're presenting it as obviously a big deal because they're a big part of uh, all these different parts of this. So this is Mark Carano. He is the uh, executive vice president, I believe, of talent relations. And Jane Geddes, who also has a big role backstage. You'll see them throughout the Total Divas uh, series. Mark Carano, no longer with WWE. He was uh, let go after he sent Mickey James all of her stuff. Senior director of talent relations, sorry. So SVP of talent relations. So Jane Geddes is even bigger than Mark Carano was. Um, and so basically Mark Carano was terminated because he sent Mickey James all of her stuff after she was terminated in a garbage bag. And oh, okay. I think I heard about that. Yeah. And so now basically she's going to go and get ready to try to be a dancer here with Fandango. And they're basically like, if as long as he's okay with it, you know, that's fine. And you know, that's not true because WWE wouldn't really care if Fandango was okay with it or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some uh, cool action here. Good little match. Lots of uh, familiar names in this one. That's The Shield. Obviously, yeah. John Mox. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns uh, against uh, Daniel Bryan in there. So, so who is, I think we may have talked about this last episode. Who is the women's champ at this time? Or is there a women's champ? Yeah, women's champion uh, WrestleMania 29, I think was still Caitlin, who was like kind of a eh, yeah, decent wrestler. Uh, she would go on to lose that title at Payback in June of 2013 to AJ Lee who became the face of the women's division and kind of the anti-Total Divas diva. And uh, go on to uh, held that title for a very long time, uh, but it would eventually leave about a year. She'd take some time off in 2014, then leave altogether in 2015 after her husband left WWE in early 2014. That, of course, CM Punk. Uh, I'm not sure if they were married yet at the time or not. I don't think they were married yet at the time, but... Uh, they were together, and uh, when Punk just walked out on the job, it kind of made things awkward for her uh, throughout. And, of course, but, she just got the big reveal that uh, she doesn't know how to dance. Right. <laughs> well, I think she knows how to dance. I don't think she has any ballroom dancing experience. So she's going to try to wing it and pass by on the idea that she's, uh, you know, a good-looking woman and, and hope for the best. And here she is uh, putting on makeup and getting ready to to kind of be, be the, the dancer for him. Uh, I have no idea if this story is just for the show or not, but what I will say is that Fandango had worked, and we're on a, a one minute. Are you on a one minute? Yeah, I'm on a one minute. All right, perfect. Yep, we're both on a one minute. So I'll, Fandango had worked so long to finally get his big break in WWE on the main roster that he certainly wasn't about to let it all just fall apart because of, uh, you know, even Marie being good looking and wanting a chance uh, on the main roster and to kind of pass through the rest of uh, developmental. Yeah. Because, in all honesty, she didn't have much uh, passion for this. This was just something she wanted to do to kind of get on TV for the E network and uh, ended up getting a decent run out of this show, but uh, never really caught on in terms of like being an in ring talent. Right. And of course, I'm here thinking, you know, what I would have done is done a complete like. Dancing with the Stars sub uh, like or like spinoff reality TV show type of segment where Fandango is doing all of these different like auditions for whoever his you know partner is going to be and all that stuff. That would have been awesome. Uh, there's a great scene of uh of all of them leaving and you've got John Cena's bus. Cena was probably yeah. the first, one of the first talents to start utilizing the big bus rather than driving from town to town he would use a big bus. So you, you basically live on this bus as you go from town to town, you have a driver and uh, much more comfortable than being in a small car and driving from town to town. I'm that, sure. Yeah. I love the scene of, as they're leaving the venue though, all the fans behind the, the gate. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if about you, but I know many of shows that I went and did that. And, uh, the, and of course then, then it's just them in the private jet. Cause yeah. You know. them in the private jet. So you're basically seeing this is, you know, big time John Cena and Nikki Bella. And this is probably the WWE official jet, I assume. Uh, yeah. Cena's going, doing a million appearances all over. And when he was a top guy for WWE, would do this. And I don't think anyone's done it nearly as much as he did as top of the company. Until now, you're starting to see it a bit with Cody Rhodes. Yeah, but, of course. But uh, definitely not to this extent. Cody does have the bus. His family travels with him. A lot of them have buses now. Uh, Seth Rollins and and 
Becky Lynch, same thing. They bring their daughter with them everywhere. So, uh, but Cena was like the first one at the time to really start to to travel like this. And eventually, I think Big Show as well. But that was Big Show because of how big he is. Yeah. I'm like, I, I'm very curious what uh, Daniel Bryan thinks of all this. I was always just amazed. I think when this show first started, I think the most amazing thing I always thought about this was I cannot, I couldn't believe Daniel Bryan of all people was going to be a big part of like the most reality of reality television shows, you know, Mr. Vegan, Mr. You know, anti-establishment, so to speak. And here he is as a big part of Total D. It was a huge part of the show. And you can but tell. I guess it's, you know, it would it would be hard for him to have said no to this if your girlfriend, fiance, whoever it is, is it, you know, like the main character, so to speak. Yeah, and it's basically their big break here. So I mean he really couldn't have if he was like, No, I don't want to be in there, it'd be like all these different awkward deals. Oh, I think this is Eva Marie's boyfriend has come to surprise her. Ah. We're gonna get a lot of Eva Marie's boyfriend. Jonathan and her family uh, and I'll never forget going to access and seeing Jonathan and her family standing on the side and Erica losing her mind so excited to see them and we, we went over and got a bunch of photos with them and we were I think the only two who recognized them and were not only recognized them but were excited to see them they couldn't have been happier that we were so happy to see them oh yeah because that's what they want like you know you so what's funny there is that uh, y- you could tell that when this starts coming around, even Marie's hope is that her, Jonathan, and the family are going to get their own spinoff. Mm-hmm. That would that would happen on this show, but it would happen with the Bellas much more than uh, than it would happen with Eva Marie, and eventually would work its way around to Ms. and Marie's also getting their own uh, reality show and spinoff. Uh, but it never did never did quite pan out for Eva Marie. So yeah, Jonathan showed up. He bought Eva Marie donuts. And uh, he's 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 Mr. Smooth here in his way oh, cool. too low, way too low cut V neck. Oh, and he's proposed to you. We got our first Total Divas proposal, and uh, yeah, just I did not expect this to happen to episode two at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and here she goes now, going to go tell JoJo. And JoJo here looks, I mean, 15. <laughs> I yeah. mean, tiny, super young. Um, and I think she legitimately was about 19. But she just looks like a, a kid hanging out here. Oh, uh, there's my main man, Vincent, back for episode two. Oh, I think course, I, okay. all of them are open for their own little spinoffs here uh, on this show. Oh, okay. So now Ariane is going outside of... WWE bubble and the seamstresses oh. with WWE to get her own gear made here um, because they were not happy with the way that everything happened at WrestleMania where they were kind of scrambling together and yeah. going to get their own gear, so to speak. And I, is this a a no no in the wrestling uh, business or is this a, okay? So I'm pretty sure I don't know, um, but I do think like I know right now, for example, the biggest guy who has the most flamboyant uh attire is is seth rollins and i know Mm. for him he has a guy who makes his own gear specific for him um but he's a big star for wwe things have probably changed i can't imagine that and i'm sure even he needs to get the approval of what he's going to be making and putting out i'm sure yeah um so you know i'm not too sure about that but it certainly does not feel like cameron is big enough on the roster here to be making this decision to go ahead Beautiful Tampa Bay, not too far away from where where you are in Orlando. And this is John Cena's house. Uh, Another big star of this show for the years to come is going to be John Cena's house and the John Cena house rules. Uh, All the different pieces of stuff that he has there that are set up. That's years to come down the road. But you can see he's got everything just perfectly lined up. He is Mr. (laughs) Steve shaking his head. In utter disgust at, uh, at the Cena stuff here. I, I it's just I mean like it it's crazy like. Oh yeah. Like this every, is like every, beyond perfect. like a an episode of Cribs like. Yeah. The idea that someone lives there too and everything just looks so immensely empty. 
I, I, I would. I am Daniel Ryan in this moment where I'm just looking at it going, why? <laughs> <laughs> Who needs this much space for somebody who's never home? He's always yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And that, I, I was going to say, like, you. <laughs> when do you have time to enjoy all of this? <laughs> Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan's response is perfect. You consider indie wrestler Daniel Bryan showing up to this house looking like, what in the world? How wasteful can we be? Who right. needs? Who needs the entire pool set up from the, uh, the the Polynesian hotel at Disney? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's com- complete. And so yeah, so now they're going to send Nikki and, <laughs> and Sean to go live. I, in I would house. say yeah, and you know I haven't seen I like I'm looking at even like the guest house and I'm like the guest house is as big as my house. Like it's insane. Yeah, uh, and they do have the uh, and you can see even the differences between the two. Nikki Vela completely done off here, made up to the gills, and then Brie is yeah. just a nor- normal, you know, girl next door. Very, I mean, obviously, but uh, you know, to- total difference in the way that they present each uh, themselves here as well. Right. But I do appreciate the drive cam. You know, I'm a big drive cam guy, so I appreciate that. Right, now, one camera in the car. They've got two because they have different shots that they're kind of putting together there. Uh, mm-hmm giving me some ideas. I, I always do the drive cam with the, you know, r- stationed right here. And then, you know, sometimes the handheld too, even though, you know, not supposed to, but look, look at this. He's got four different uh, driveways for all of his cars that he has too. Yeah. I, uh, absurd. I wonder if he, he must have to have insurance on each one of those cars. I mean, you have to, right? Like legally. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's, it's a drop in the bucket for John, but still. Tampa has kind of become that home away from home for a lot of wrestlers, though. That's like the city a lot of them have moved to. That's what I hear, yeah. yeah. And Because um, I remember, too, it was kind of a easy for folks. They, they were excited about them being in uh, WrestleMania, being in Tampa, because so many of them were able to just go back to where they lived afterwards. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then this past week, when uh, it was in Orlando and Tampa for uh, SmackDown and then Raw. Yeah, that was pretty cool that I did Raw in Tampa, too. I bet there's a bunch of people who probably did them both. Uh, we would have had we not been on the cruise. Um, yeah, and right. then when we when we watched this past Raw and they were like live from Tampa, Amanda did not know. And then she looked at me and like, we could have gone to Raw too. <laughs> <laughs> we were on a cruise. Like, I wasn't going to tell you that we're, that they were in Tampa specifically because of that. It's, it's too funny that they did. Oh, so now, now uh, you know, you've got Eva Marie taking off her ring for her meeting with, her with Fandango. Oh. So that the, the, the business, and JoJo is very unhappy about this. She wants uh, Eva Marie to slow down and uh, and stop, but at the end right. of the day, you know, it's kind of, kind of what they need to uh, to do. And now here's Nikki oh, no. Bell. You know, <laughs> dressed like completely ridiculous for their time <laughs> in Aberdeen, chopping up the wood. And then they uh, they were going to commercial here, but previewing how Fandango looks like he's trying to get himself a little of uh, Eva Marie. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. He's not pretending that she's uh, engaged recently. I'm on a one minute break here. Are you also on a break? I am indeed. Okie doke. Yeah, this is very much shaping up to be the the quintessential reality TV show episode. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's not too much backstage cool WWE stuff here. They, they threw in the one clip of uh, Daniel Bryan wrestling with the Shield there uh, right. to give you a little something. But this is very much a ton of drama all over the place. Uh, I always appreciate when they decide to do uh, like reality shows and they, they give them a storyline. So like this storyline of obviously there's no reason why Daniel Bryan and like, you know, me, my, myself and my wife wouldn't go live where my sister lives right now and her come live here. It just it doesn't happen in real life. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, and, you know, yeah, it's for the show and, like, yeah, it's manufactured and it's like, all right, like, that that I need to take myself out of my, you know, oh, I want to get the actual scoop and just watch it as entertainment. Right, right. And so now here is John Cena's house. I will say I appreciate the idea that he's got basically the cenote jump off and the big water slide in, in the backyard. And here right. they are. You, and I, I'm willing to bet it's the first time they've ever gone on that. <laughs> like they were like, John, can you go do that? And he was like, I guess. Uh, but right. 
I think John Cena's ever spending his uh you know few moments at home here doing uh big dives off the uh the deal there and, and everything. I mean, very cool, don't get me wrong, but a little water park in right. your backyard is uh certainly something to to snivel at. That would also be me dog paddling away and <laughs> Yeah, uh, and you can tell that they all have Prosecco, and I don't even think Daniel Bryan is drinking. Oh, does he have a little drink there? Yeah, he does have a drink. He does have a drink. So he's trying, but, you know, it's just so interesting, too, because this was the image, obviously, WWE wanted in their top star, and Bryan now is on the rise, eventually, to to challenge Cena for that spot. And you can tell he's completely different than yeah. we're seeing. So Ariane here, Cameron, is now trying to go get these outfits done up for the Funkadactyls. Uh, Funkadactyls, even though uh, they're in WWE, they would not last all that much longer. I, 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 feel, I feel like once Total Divas started, they may have already been done with the Funkadactyls. I think they're finished by like November of 2013 already. Uh, so I guess they'd be around a couple more months, but for the most part, uh, they'd be kind of on the outs here soon enough. Yeah. And this is an interesting idea. So she's going with Fandango to dinner to kind of talk about what the part is. I do love your idea, though, that Fandango should have been sitting there like a judge as all the ballroom dancing women came right. over. But, like, you know, of... dancing with them and, like, you know, seeing who you had chemistry with. Like, like it, it was both it would be both a, an actual good part of seeing who is going to be able to fit in with him. And also, like, it would make good TV, I think. Exactly. Yeah, I th they definitely should have done that. Uh but yeah, and he is just smitten uh, with Eva Marie here, and definitely uh, looks looks quite interested here in her. Now, of course, what's interesting is the woman who eventually does become Fandango's dancer is not Eva yeah. Marie, is Summer Rae, and Summer Rae will join the cast of Total Divas in the coming seasons as well. So she becomes a part, yeah, of uh, everything. And now he's asking her, like, what, 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 what type of training she's had, what she could do. Yeah. Uh, I think at some point here, she's going to either need to come clean or she's going to have to go out there and just embarrass herself. Right. But again, like, this is all, like, you know, what, what's the taking off the ring her idea, actually? Like, you know, what is... I could see that being uh, a thing, to be honest, the taking of off, off of the ring. Yeah. I, I, think, I think that probably does happen, where... People go in for an interview and, and they take the ring off and, you know, want to present a certain way. I, I, right. I think that probably that, that could have been her idea. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. It's definitely it, it was definitely to kind of more, more present an available image. So like, oh, pick me because, you know, maybe you'll have a shot with me type of thing. Yeah. And now Fandango's invited her to the club with the boys. I am hoping that it's a bunch of random WWE dudes <laughs> out there, like a who's who of WWE talent. Uh, and uh, Fandango was invited even Marie to come out to the club there. And uh, the secret is not being able to dance, not that she just got engaged. Right, yeah, not that she has a fiancé. Her, yeah. her secret is that. Yeah, and he's uh, he's uh, kissing on her hands constantly. Yeah, right, I yeah, know. Absolutely did not invite her to the club. He's telling her she looks beautiful. He did not invite her to the club. He doesn't even care about the dancing at this point. He just wants to uh, see where things could go with her. Well, I think, yeah, you'd think so. You put yourself in a terrible position here. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah. That's like that type of stuff happens. Uh, you, you, you hear folks say that all the time, and it's like, you've got to be smart about how you're putting, what the positions you're putting yourself in before, uh, you know doing that type of stuff and this is leading up to i have a 30 second one how long is yours uh 45 uh, so i'll have to put it on a pause here until you're done but this this uh episode is cl getting to climax here with uh with um the big reveal of her trying to dance here with fandango oh yeah yeah i'm sure at one point uh stone cold steve austin had tweeted i'll never forget mark my words fandango future intercontinental champion <laughs> Never happened. Uh, wow. Honestly, it was because he got uh, injured, uh, which is a shame. Uh -huh. I think he continued to get concussed, and that's why things kind of sort of didn't work out for him there. Um, are you back now? 
Uh, I am back right now. Okay. And we only have two more commercial breaks here coming up. So here they go. They're off to their uh, off to the races, so to speak. It looks like uh, going Brian, back onto the private jet. They're back in the private jet and they're ready. So I love that. I love that John and Nikki to get to Aberdeen are coming to a in a private jet all the way out to the state of Washington to go and live out there. Heaven forbid they just have to get there like a no, normal means of transportation. Well, yeah, because I mean, then it would you know take a, like two weeks. That's true. That is true. I guess, I, I, I guess looking at my past, I would love to be at the WWE jet. That's the one thing. That and a tour of WWE headquarters are my two mm -hmm. bu bucket listy type things in order to uh, to do here. So the contest is. Did we miss it? Is turn? what exactly? Like what? Yeah, I mean, did we miss it. I don't know if we missed what, what the what the contest terms were, but I know they're going to live the other one's life. Like. Yeah, I guess whoever could, you know, what, what, last a certain amount of time here. Oh yeah, the, because John Cena's life is so hard. Like that, yeah. you know, living in that mansion. Like Even if you're not used to it, it's pretty much a vacation in order to go and stay there. Right, but like, like I I could not because I would feel so like I don't know, I don't guilty isn't the right word, but like there's such a thing as like too much, right? Luxury, it, you know, and you know, looking at the at you know Aberdeen, like that's not bad like it's not like they're living no. in, you know a, a hovel or like you know they're yeah. not living in squalor here in aberdeen like it's, it's yeah. a nice comfortable house it looks very nice i think it'd be a fun little place to go i i would totally go stay here for a vacation like a nice uh it's almost like a, almost like a wooden little cabin type deal out right. in a, in a rural area yeah and he's saying you know like all of that furniture is like you know, pass through the family. Like he's like saying, oh, this is like my my family stuff. Like this is, you know, my parents' furniture and like that kind of thing. And it's like John absolutely has no idea where any of the furniture in his house came from. Like it, it's just there. Yeah, exactly. And Nikki just said uh, that, you know, she's already questioning how Bree could possibly be happy with Brian. <laughs> with, with everything uh, going on here and uh, living in, in this uh, poverty, <laughs> poverty ridden uh, house right. here. And, you know, I like, yeah, I, I saw the, the preview clip of them chopping wood and everything like that. I don't necessarily know how much Daniel Bryan chops wood on a daily basis. Like, right. The man is, you know, going over and uh, and I do think at some point they move um, out of this. But, uh, you know, she's saying, like, do you really love the, the parents furniture? What's wrong with it? Like, you know, yeah. if you're like, it's not like it was, I don't know. There's Jimmy Uso, probably uh, one of my favorite parts of uh, of this show. Get well uh, soon, Jimmy. What's that? Get well soon, Jimmy. Ah, uh, get well soon. I know. I know. I think, uh, and yeah, there's uh, there's Trinity, who's actually had a very big uh, impact on the ratings for I love this John Uso. I don't is Uso even his real name? No, it's Fat Two. So yeah. how are, how are why is it John? <laughs> you're you're combining his wrestling yeah. name with his real name. His right. real name. Just either call him John Fat Two or Jimmy Uso. Like right, his name is a like John Uso. <laughs> Completely ridiculous. I do like his 2013 style though. Oh um, yeah. The uh, what is that? The the cut and sew uh, brand. Yeah. That, that's, shout Mark out to Jacobs. Mark Jacobs. Shout out to Joe Loftus. He was a big fan of that. Joe, Joe recently here on our uh, our channel. Uh, he used to right. do uh, Mark Echo cut and sew all the time. Now this is just awkward. Uh, awkward as possible. This is hey. This is on E. So remember, we need to be like we, we yeah. need to show some skin. Like, right. It's like how can we get John Cena to take his shirt off? All right, everybody. Everyone, take the shirt off. And I remember and also uh, like, why are you doing it in in high heels? Right, right, exactly. And I think that's what they're trying to show is that each one of these is really uh, <laughs> a difficult time. But you're right. I don't know that Daniel Bryan and Bree are doing this other. Like, I don't even know where this piece of footage, where 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 this area is that he has all this wood. Maybe, maybe right. the fireplace. Now, of course, John is probably gonna have no issue. Yeah. I'll look yeah. at this. This entire scene is just 
John Cena to go to do what he basically needs to, uh, you know, do for this show here. What's interesting, though, is, like, I wonder if the show was on now with Brian being an AEW, if he'd still be a part of the show. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, probably not. They did just have a special, uh, Nikki Bella Gets Married. It was, like, a four-week special. I wonder oh. if he's a part of it. I guess he'd probably have to be. He's a part of their life. Yeah. Although, I mean, probably just, he's probably just on there as Brian. Like, not... Right. Yeah, Brian. And then, like, you see him hanging in the background. Brian. Bree's Bree's husband. <laughs> <laughs> probably what it says so they won this contest but of course they did John Cena's blowing through the wood like it's uh right yeah and and again like I mean you know listen Brian does no slouch so... <laughs> yeah no he's a great great shape I mean it's not like he's uh you know completely out of it there now, this, these types of things I always find just so awkward because you know there's a cameraman hanging there. Right. So how do they, I mean, that has to take a little getting used to. The cameraman has to be like, well, this is, do you guys want me to leave? Like, what do you want me to do? No, no, it's it's set up like, that way. It's, hey, we need a clip of you guys in bed, so just do that real quick and then. Right. That's a good we call. We need another, we need, you know, if John isn't going to be on the rest of the episode, at least his last scene needs to be without his shirt on. Like Exactly. So, yeah, so this is going to be kind of now, is is Brie Bella really okay giving up whatever she's started to live with in California to mm -hmm. go and be who lives here in Aberdeen? I will say, this does capture exactly how the weather is in Washington. When I went to Seattle, it was pretty much raining endlessly on and off. Like it, it was sunny for very small pockets. That's what I hear, there. yeah. Yeah. Beautiful city, but, like, you got to be ready to just expect tons of rain. And yeah. most of the people are just walking around in regular clothes, no umbrellas, no sh jackets. Because oh, yeah, just... yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. That's a nice house. I agree with Rob Bella here. It is, I will say that I, uh, I'm not sure, and I know both of us, I think both of us, had uh, gotten our first place to live with our wife. Mm hmm and made that decision together i'm not sure how i how it would have gone if like one of us had a place Ari did very early on in our relationship and then it was like hey you're welcome to come move into my place i don't think it ever really feels like it's also the other person's place until you both get your own place together yeah i could see that there's definitely something to be said for that yeah I mean, it's, uh, yeah, and, and, and so I get, I get that, like, so I guess Brian grew up in this house, he's got tons of family memories, but Bree's having a little bit of, like, hey, this isn't even my life, and now I'm just kind of, like, being thrust into, you know, that portion of it, right. which is, uh, which is quite, quite interesting. Oh, Sandra's having none of the, uh, the outfits that the, uh, mm -hmm. the Funkadactyls were able to score here. Now, I don't know when took place at all on an actual show i'm on a i'm on a break here tom brady talking about how hard it is for love to hurt i got a minute how about you i have a minute oh, on my right. u-haul fox commercial if that's uh oh, are you I, I like, like tom is consistently on uh every commercial break for peacock mm. tom brady spinning the wheel and doing the uh the whole hurts thing oh uh, yeah okay do we know how many minutes we have here Left uh, I think so. Last time I checked, with the last commercial break, we were at about 20 minutes left. So I'm thinking maybe we have somewhere around 15 left because then we still have one commercial break. Right, right, right. So we may have to uh, we may have to finish it off on Wednesday at this place and then go into another episode because I have to run and grab Dakota by okay. six. It's very. <laughs> um, well, we'll have to see. Let's see. Let's, I'm, I'm about to be back from the commercial, so let's see. As a, yeah. All right. Let's see. Yeah, we have 10 minutes left. Uh, yep. Yeah. With one more commercial break, I could just be a couple minutes left. So. Okay. We'll plow through. This is the business. This is where you want to be. This All right. So now they're back here from, uh, this is the type of stuff I love. That show yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what we've been waiting for. 
a little, you see, this is, they, they knew that like wrestling fans were also tuning into this. So they'd randomly show you a quick picture of Raw being set up and a mm-hmm. little backstage. That's my favorite part of the show thus far. I'd say John without the shirt one, two is the backstage as my two favorite moments uh, of the show thus far. That shot uh, of the catering is Fred though. Still, you know, the catering, the catering and me, me saying, and nobody on the sh- and the people who are never really on the show just kind of spend all their time catering. Cue yeah. Zack Ryder walking to the table. Pretty great. And Fandango's kind of, uh, they've led up to this moment. Yeah, the Eva is not lasting long here. She's not long for this world. She's already rubbed everyone the wrong way with the idea that she's changed her hair. And now here she is uh, lying to Fandango and not having a clue how to dance. But I mean, you know, I guess from a, you know, storyline perspective, um, it isn't like, you know, she she definitely is fitting the bill for the person that's just trying to make it just to be famous. Right. As we saw, you know, a few people on when, when we did our rewatch of Tough Enough, it was the same deal where there were people that were on that show just to get, you know, their foot in the door, so to speak. 100 percent. Yeah. This is the first appearance of Natty on the entire show. Yeah. She has not been on this week at all. Uh, I, I, I feel like, uh, I don't know how I, I forgot about. that she was supposed to be a part of it, and that wasn't just a one-time thing. Right, right. No, she's she's a big part of the actual show. But, um, yeah. but yeah. All right, and they're showing how they're getting all the lights set up and everything, and basically the big production of Raw. It's amazing how quick they probably get everything all set up there. Oh, yeah. I'm, or yeah. it's got to be just like in and out and, and finish that night. Well, so when we went to SmackDown, it was it was a similar thing where after the after the show, we kind of like stuck around a little bit and they were like taking everything down within minutes of the show ending. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Did you guys waited around afterwards? Well, so we have um, um, and I'm on a 30 second break. 45? I'm at 30. 30? All right, so you'll have to... Oh, I'm spinning, so you have to hold off a couple minutes for me. Okay. But, yeah, we stuck uh, around a little bit just to, because uh, we knew that getting out was going to be a little bit of a hassle and, like, getting to the car and all that stuff because um, yeah. there's only, like, the one bridge. So we kind of waited around just to hang out, and, yeah, it was within minutes. They were, t- like, there were, like, had to have been 100 people breaking stuff down. Well, you got to figure there's probably a bunch of stuff ready to go the next day. You know, yeah. I'm sure there's something there that's a, that's uh, in the works for the next day. Oh, yeah. Are you back? Uh, I'm not back yet. No, nope, I got about 15 more seconds. I'll let you know exactly when we're back. And then uh, we'll, we'll close out uh, Total, uh, Total Divas episode two uh, and our discussion on Fandango. But he's going to be back. He's, he's kind of a recurring okay. uh, okay. a Jace character. All right, I'm back. Yeah. Okay. And they show everything at the, the Volk Center. Not sure where that's located. Uh, but here they go. So if you're looking through and want to know what episode this was at, it was in 2013, whenever WWE was at the Volk Center. Interesting. Could, let me see if I could uh, look up where that's located. And they're doing something here before the show. Some, uh, some I guess it's a rehearsal. Yeah. And she's coming out, and <laughs> not much clue as to how to uh, figure out where that is at all. Right, and <laughs> I love everybody just kind of like awkwardly watching this, like, oh no, <laughs> their reactions are priceless. I mean, it's probably like you could pretty much. It's a hard thing to fake if you don't know how to do this. It's just never gonna work. Right. Yeah. For sure. So this is actually it was uh, located in Tol in the it's actually the Bach Center B O C B O K in oh. Tulsa Oklahoma. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a, that's a great comment from Natty there. The one thing think about like somebody gets injured and then they're immediately labeled injury prone. Yeah. Uh, it'd be somebody has a bad attitude. They're always gonna have a bad attitude. It takes them years to recover. So you know one <laughs> thing, your reputation really is everything in WWE. 
right? And I am that guy in that moment where I'm like, I, I am not a dancer, and I know that wasn't good. What's that? When when the uh, EVP when the executive goes, I'm not, I'm no dancer, and I know that that wasn't good. And yeah. then they just walks away, going, No, we're not doing this again. <laughs> That's like, yeah, yeah, Mark, uh, Mark Carrado there. Uh, this storyline, a little silly here. Uh, th- 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 this feels like they're trying to trying to figure out what to do with the two of them. Uh, yeah. You know, with the, I guess, uh, so basically Cameron went and got gear done for both of them. However, uh, I guess as Trini's saying, she's, well, there you go. Basically, she's yeah, got, a, you know, when you have to censor it, that, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. So she's got to worry about, I guess, different pieces than, uh, than, than Cameron necessarily does. So, uh, uh, yeah. And I guess so. The, it, Kat, Naomi or Turney is not a big fan of uh, of the outfits there. So yeah, of like, course now she's got to come to the seamstress, going, "Hey, so I got to fix this," and she's gonna be like, "Talk like, oh, you we're too good for me a little while ago." And now, right? Yeah, no, no, this is your problem now. <laughs> yeah, you need me to bail you out? Uh, no, thanks. Not happening. And so they told her they basically did not like the gear that she made. They thought it wasn't sexy enough. Right. You're like, you want it sexy. There you go. Exactly. Now yeah. everything's pouring out. Now nothing fits. This is great. Yeah. And now Sandra, they're coming to have her pick everything up and uh, see what they could do with the gear. A total slap in the face to poor Sandra here. And Sandra's having none of it. Yeah. And like, what else do you expect her to be able to do with that? Like, what? Yeah, like you don't got extra fat fabric or anything, like. <laughs> yeah, but it's like at the end of the day, it's not even hers. Right. So, so Cameron's having some trouble here, uh, already kind of fitting into WWE, even though she's already been a part of the roster. And Eva Marie is so this is basically Cameron's kind of the next stage of Eva Marie. She never really has any sort of in in ring career after this. Never really had much aspirations of being a wrestler kind of did tough enough to become famous. And then from that, even though she gets canned right away, the first person kicked off the show, she ends up uh, getting a job with WWE anyway. Yeah. Okay. Good for her. Yeah, I would do it. Good for, good for the team's choice. Like, yeah, I would say no, too. Yeah, screw that. Oh, so they do get new out. They got new outfits, though. And you know what? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, No. I mean, at the end of the day, especially for what they're going for, they, they look fine. Yeah. I mean, I guess 2013, WWE is, is coming out of the Santa's Little Helper uh, type of women's matches every Christmas, that type of stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and you know, Trinity making a good point. You can't piss off the scene because not going to have anything right, for yeah. it in the future there. So just uh, just crazy stuff there. Right. And here they come with uh, with Brodus. It's, uh, you know, who knows if those crowd shots were at all for the entrance of... <laughs> yeah, I can tell you right now, that girl jumping up and down, mouth ajar, going nuts, right. definitely not. But maybe these guys, to be funny, were, were for them. But that girl losing her mind was not at the entrance of Brodus and Penze coming out there. Oh, and now things are not good here for Eva Marie. She's shaking and uh, waiting for Steph to come in and lay down the law. Mm-hmm. And Canner, that'll be it. Two episodes in. Goodbye, Eva Marie. She's gone. Right. And I, 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 I'm willing to bet that's exactly how Stephanie presents herself to. Like, I do not oh. think this is that. I bet that's exactly how she is as an executive. Oh, Take, yes. Yeah. No, there's no nonsense. Right. Like, yeah. She's saying you you embarrassed the, yourself and the company. Yeah. And, yeah, like, what did you think? Again, what did you think was going to happen? Like, right. if you, you know, this is, dancing is not the kind of thing that you can really fake in, in this particular kind of gimmick. Like, no. Nah. Yeah. Uh, so there's a couple more minutes here I've learned uh, from our first episode. I thought it ended and it wasn't over. We have about a minute left, but I think the last little bit is probably going to be, this is probably going to be the, uh, the, the send off point here. And then we're going to pick it up next episode. As far yeah. as what the fallout for this is going to be. Right. Exactly. And this episode here, 
uh, will be uploaded here to the channel. It'll be on uh, fr Friday, August the 4th. So even though I will be in Detroit for SummerSlam for this show, as we speak, through the magic of YouTube, <laughs> we're able to uh, still have this go up on August 4th. Uh, St Steph is like about to do the straight up Vince McMahon. You bark like a dog. You bark like a dog. You want to kill right, me? Yeah, like... What a what a poor, a poor decision on Eva Marie's part to try to pull it off and just hope that they were going to change the whole gimmick. Her thought probably was they're going to love me so much they'll change his entire gimmick. And or... go... so Steph gives her a final warning, but she's yeah. still in the roster one more time. And that'll be a wrap on old Eva Marie. Right. Or just, you know, hey, it's dancing. How hard could it be? Exactly. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, come on. Yeah. So a fun episode of Total Divas. Hopefully you guys all, in, guys and gals, enjoyed it. And uh, we will be back here with you for Total Divas episode three next week. Anything you'd like to say before we get on out of here, Steve? I'm very happy that picking up, that business is picking up. Yeah. Um, yeah we'll, we'll see what happens in the next episode. There we go. So we'll be back here next week. Let us know what you thought of the episode in the comment section below. And until next time, everybody, take care. We'll catch you in the next video.